People always ask me, where can a beginner start if they want to learn correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar? Are there any books? Uh, where, what do I do? How do I do this? And usually they email me or they'll comment on my YouTube channel. Which tells me that they have not watched any of the 300 videos that I provide on my YouTube channel. They just, whatever, caught a live feed or caught a couple seconds of a video and decided to comment and move on. This is what I call the short attention span theater crowd. Usually they're younger folks and they just, you know, that's just the way they were brought up. They prefer to have things handed to them. Well, in this podcast, I'm going to hand some things to them. I'm going to do a little spoon feeding, something I don't normally do. So where do people begin? Like, what, what can they start with as far as this grammar goes? Well, putting the over 300 videos available for free on my YouTube channel aside, what one can do for one them, for themselves is to begin to learn how to parse words, to get in the habit of looking things up for themselves. I don't mean watching a Colin David Eiffelman, Colin Miller video where he gives the, you know, the standard, whatever you want to call them, uh, catchphrases, you know, where he says, president means pre-simulated Uh, denture or judge means or or justice means judge speaks no law or whatever or America no mercy for the sheep these types of things I'm not talking about that I'm talking about you yourself as a student going out and parsing the particles of these words going out and doing your own research internet etymology dictionary and I, those examples I just gave, I challenge you to go and certify what Colin David Eiffel and Colin Miller said for yourself and see if you can do it. See if you come to the same conclusions that he did regarding those words. And what I've come uh, to the conclusion with regards to particles of negation is that this has definitely been ingrained into the educational system. Why? I can't say for sure because I don't know uh, who ingrained it or I, you know, I wasn't there when it happened. What I can do is look at the performances and see that it has indeed been ingrained in every uh, aspect of the education system, the language, the whole deal, everything. And by particle of negation, I mean literally the parts of a word that mean no or no contract that have a negative condition of state, a negative connotation. And again, you can find this out just by looking it up in an in a etymology dictionary. For example, the vowel in front of a consonant at the beginning of a word meaning no. Now, it doesn't matter whether it's a vowel in front of one consonant, a vowel in front of two consonants, a vowel in front of three, four, whatever. It doesn't matter if it's one vowel at the beginning of a word followed by a consonant. It is no contract. It's a negative condition of state. Now, if it's two vowels, meaning there's a vowel and then another vowel followed by a consonant at the beginning of a word, that's positive performance. And if you check out the syntax playlist on my YouTube channel and also the Parse playlist, I give closure to this in multiple videos, so you can check that out for yourself. Or you can look it up in an etymology dictionary and you can research exactly what a vowel is and what a consonant is. You can look these things up and certify them for yourselves. The venues are there, it's not hidden. Like some people think this stuff is hidden. 
It is not hidden. You just have to be willing to put the work in to look it up for yourself. So those things are particles of negation. There are also prefixes and suffixes that are particles of negation. Mainly, any prefix or suffix that negates the now space, any prefix or suffix that implies future tense or now tense, i.e. negating the now space, those would be particles of negation, meaning no. So like a word like receipt or review, the RE means no, because it means to do something again. You're not doing it right now, you're doing it again. Or the suffix ED, it's past tense. Or the word TO, it's future tense. These types of things, you can look them up for yourselves and certify them for yourselves. These are particles of negation and they make up a huge percentage of the words we use. Now that is not the only negative conditions of state that have been pretty much embedded in our psyches. No, no, no. There are many more uh, scenarios, many more conditions of state, many more uh, programs that we have had embedded in our brains through the education system, which are negative conditions of state. And I'm going to go into that in the next segment. I was just scrolling through uh, my Instagram the other day, my Coral Blade Grotto Instagram account. And uh, I follow some some common law people just because I I find it interesting some of the concepts and ideas that they come up with you know without fail they're religious oriented uh, you know having to do with the Bible and things like that which for someone like me you know when I usually when I see that it's a red flag for me flag protocol I just keep scrolling don't pay any attention to it. Uh, sometimes they come up, they have some very interesting uh, ideas. And I just saw one the other day from something, I think it was called tactical sovereignty, where the individual says, claim your title or something like that. And every single thing that was on the list of titles was a negative condition of state. Like saying what, like like he was saying, you have to tell them what you are, i.e. you are non-compliant. You are what non-biased. You are not guilty. You are, you know, not this, not that, not the third. It's all not and non. Now think about it. If you go... If I ask you, hey, can you please run down to the corner store for me and, you know, get me uh, <laughs> get me a bottle of vodka and a pack of cigarettes, please? You know, you know what you're going to get, right, when you go down to get it. But if I send you down, if I ask you to get down to the corner store and I give you a list of all the things I don't want, does that make sense to you? That may not have been the best example. I was just trying to be a little uh, cheeky there, but... <laughs> In all seriousness, why would you tell someone what you're not? That's a negative condition of state. Why wouldn't you just say what you are rather than what you're not? And this is the uh, one of the key psychological points behind quantum grammar is you're making positive performance claims. You're not telling people what you're not doing. You're telling people what you are doing. You're not telling people what you're not. You're telling people what you are. You wouldn't go around saying, I'm (laughs) non-dead. Right? I'm not dead. Well, obviously. Okay. No, you're a live life claimant. You're a live creature. Why would you say you're not dead? Leave those types of things 
to the fiction. Now, of course, I'm not telling you what to do. I'm offering suggestions for the beginners out there who are trying to wrap their heads around this, for the short attention span theater crowd that prefer to be uh, have things handed to them and spoon-fed. This is for them. Why would you go around participating with a negative condition of state? And this goes all the way back to religion and people who participate with religious beliefs. Thou shalt not. These are negative conditions of state. You're always yelling at your children, telling them, don't do that. You can't do that. It's been ingrained in us. Not to mention, and I'll just touch on this briefly, the public and private education system has been modeled quite literally off of the prison system where you constantly are under an authoritarian environment where you have to ask to go to the freaking bathroom and sometimes are denied. You can only eat when they tell you to eat at an allotted time. You can only go outside or, or whatever, have recess playtime at a certain time. It's like lockdown 23 and 1, right? <laughs> Seriously. And you have to do it. Otherwise, your parents will get sanctioned by the state if you don't go. So, I just thought I'd throw that out there. Also, another little tidbit to show you the arbitrariness, the greed, and the ridiculousness of the fiction system in that they made a huge deal about seatbelts many years ago, where they made it mandatory that you wear a seatbelt. And if you are driving down the road, a police officer can pull you over for not wearing a seatbelt and give you a ticket and sanction you. Why? Oh, because, you know, we got to, you know, you're, you're not old enough to, to make these decisions for yourself. You're just a little child. So the nanny state is going to tell you that you have to do it because it's for your own good because you're not smart enough to protect yourself. But yet, how many states in the past tense United States, how many states have buses that carry you know, thousands and thousands of our most precious creatures, our children, to and from school that don't have seatbelts. I remember riding in a little yellow quarantine bus. I'm being cheeky. In a yellow, little yellow bus, because in flag protocol, that's what yellow means, caution. But I remember riding in these buses on these back roads with potholes <clears throat> and hitting my head off the ceiling, literally off the roof of the bus because I was being bounced around. So if seatbelts are so important and such a safety uh, issue, then why aren't there seatbelts on every single damn school bus in this country? Well, my guess is that the children just aren't old enough to pay fines yet, so what's the point? You see the dichotomy. Negative condition of state. And I think they took the, uh, the seatbelt thing a step further, pushing the envelope way further with this whole mask goofiness. I mean, think about it. It's a logical progression for an oppressive uh, authoritarian fiction governing system. If you are a beginner, interested in learning correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, and quantum grammar, I'm sure you've come across a few other individuals on YouTube when you do searches, or even just on Google when you do searches. My name is one that comes up. I'm very blessed uh, and grateful that it does come up in those searches for those people that are in interested, but there are other names that also come up. One of which would be colon mark hyphen lowercase k kishon colon Christopher and also colon Russell hyphen j colon Gould. Now, it goes without saying 
that the man, the myth, the legend, colon David, I win, colon Miller, and we're talking about colon, all caps, David, hyphen, all caps, win, degree, symbol, colon, space, all caps, Miller, full stop. He is the man who brought this grammar to the public. All due honor and grace to him and everything he's done. However, he is not here in the now space to speak in a now space scenario. So therefore, I'm not going to touch on that. I'm just going to touch on those who are here and are active uh, out in this space of correct sentence structure or quantum grammar. I'm going to call it quantum grammar because those two individuals that I named, they don't really use correct sentence structure, communication, parsley, syntax, grammar in the classical sense. It's it basically what they use is adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, fiction, babble that looks like correct sentence structure. And if you go to some of the videos on my Coral Blade Grotto uh, YouTube channel and also in the community section of my YouTube channel, www.youtube.com forward slash Jason Matthew Glass, you will see a plentiful continuance of the evidence of where I show how their grammar is not correct sentence structure. But I digress. The, the uh, topic of the podcast is uh, negative condition of state authoritarian thinking and particles of negation and things like that. And you as a beginner, when you watch these videos, and let's start with colon Mark hyphen lowercase k Kishon colon Christopher's videos. He will come out and he's very um, engaging when you listen to him speak. Um, when he talks about world events and his opinion on what's happening what's going to happen. Uh, He shares ideas that he can predict the future or what's going to happen by watching movies or listening to music. You can learn these types of interpretations if that's what floats your boat. But the point I'm going to uh, concentrate on is his claim to be what's called a chief federal postal judge of a federal postal court. Meaning that he claims that he is the ultimate and final authority over what is considered correct, what is considered not correct. I.e. it's implied he is the ultimate judge and authority of what is considered evil and what is considered good. And he's begun labeling certain individuals as psychopaths, sycophants, narcissists, infiltrators, agents and he throws out terminology like final solution with threats of putting people in jail in quantum prisons and he talks about deputizing or uh, what's the word I'm looking for Uh, tip staffing I don't know if he uses the word tip staff but he talks about Employing people, not employing, what is the word I'm looking for? He's creating positions like sheriffs and things like that. And actually sending people badges to go arrest people. Other people who he, as the ultimate authority, chief federal postal judge, determines who needs to be arrested and who doesn't. Right? And he's going to put them in jail. How this works, I have no idea. But this is a negative condition of state if you think about it. Because that's exactly what the fiction system does. The fiction system has their own police force and goes out and sanctions people. And so you would conceivably comply with with what they want you to do or go to jail. Who made them boss, right? Well, who made this Kishon Christopher boss? who consented to his authority. And he's very clever about it because he comes on and he says things like, I need your consent before I can go do this, before I can put these people in jail, or before I can condemn or disqualify these people 
I need your consent. And then you look in the chat and you see all the the little followers saying, yes, Mark, we give you our consent. And it's really quite uh, humorous to someone like me uh, from my position. But from your position as a beginner, it may not be so humorous. You may take it very serious. Which is a good thing. Because hopefully it will motivate you to learn what's really going on here. Which is just another facet of the authoritarian negative condition of state system. That's exactly what he's doing. He's using the same tactics. And they are tactics because it is a war in that sense against you. And he's part of it. And when you watch the videos, you will see exactly what I'm talking about. Who, I mean, in the broadest sense of the term, what I'm trying to say here is, why is it that he's the authority? How is it that one man can be authority over everyone and determine what's good, what's evil, what's okay and what's not okay? If he truly wants to have a starfish sort of community where everyone's rule one, rule equal. Well, no. He doesn't want a geometric level playing field because he has just violated that by placing himself in that position. And everything's a negative condition of state. If you follow these rules, then you're good. If you don't, if you start thinking for yourself or go outside of that now, I'm going to send one of my sheriffs to put you in jail. And this this is not a joke because I know people that were his former students that he actually sent badges to. (laughs) Is that funny or is that funny? So, of course, the the next individual I'm going to give an example to uh, for you beginners is uh, Colin Russell hyphen J. Colin Gould, who... A brief history of him. He was Colin David Eiffelman, Colin Miller's student, apprentice, whatever. David was the teacher. David was the authority. He was the one in charge. Um, He ran the show. And Russell, after David passed, suddenly, however you want to even say it, modified his position, changed his position, started modifying and changing the whole construct from being something that was available to everyone to something that got bottlenecked and cut off and then suddenly people were being charged fees for this, that, and the third and well that whole history is there and if you are a noob, if you are a beginner then you probably are not aware of the way things were prior to 2018 when David Windmiller passed away. You probably have no idea how things used to be when David was the one that was in charge of the technology. Uh, So I'll go into it a little bit here about how Russell is pretty much the flip side of Marcus Sean Christopher, uh, but they're two sides of the same coin In, in the sense that they both promulgate the propaganda of the authoritarian construct with the threats of violence and jail and fear and all that stuff and having one individual be in charge which of course would be Russell because he always goes around claiming these titles commander in chief chief federal postal judge postmaster general pretty much their uh military titles coming from an individual who was never in the military that I know of. I mean, David Wynn Miller was in the military at one time, and I'm talking about adjective, adjective, pronoun David Wynn Miller. I'm not talking about colon David hyphen Wynn colon Miller punctuated live life claimant because when he was in the military, quantum grammar didn't even, wasn't in the public perception. Okay. So that whole court-martial thing with, with the court-martial of Colin, hyphen David, or Colin David hyphen Wim Colin Miller back in 2017, 
is completely null and void because Colin David hyphen Wynn Colin Miller was never in the military. Adjective, adjective, pronoun David Wynn Miller was in the military, but not the punctuated David Wynn Miller. And the court martial quite clearly states that it was a court martial of Colin David hyphen Wynn Colin Miller. So, <laughs> share with me the logic behind that, if you will, because I don't see it, and therefore it's null and void. In any case, to get that out of the way, uh, Russell goes on in, in many videos that you can watch from 2018 on, after David passed. He now, seriously, check the demeanor out. His demeanor is completely different after his mentor passed away. Before his mentor passed away, uh, Russell was a different, had a different demeanor in the videos and in the way he taught. And he always deferred to David's authority. Always. You can watch the videos and see them for yourself. Uh, when Russell was talking and if David interrupted, Russell shut up and stopped talking. Even when Russell would do uh, seminars by himself, he would always, if someone asked a question, and Russell would be like, ah, Dave told me not to talk about that, so I'm not going to talk about that. So he deferred to David's authority. And once that authority was gone, then Russell completely changed his tune into something different and came into basically what, in my opinion, would be a grab for some sort of control to put himself in the position of being in charge of the whole quantum grammar, uh, whatever you want to call it, contingent, where... He's in charge. He determines, like I said about Mark Sean Christopher, he determines who's good, who's bad, uh, blah, blah, blah. He makes it quite clear that if you don't have his thumbprint or whatever on your contracts, then you're not valid and you can't use the technology, which is a completely different and completely incorrect position with regards to correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, because it's all about rule one, rule equal. Something that he brought to the fore uh, back, way back when he and David were doing their seminars. Russell always talked about rule one, rule equal. Well, here he's quite clearly violating it by placing himself above everyone and forcing people, well, he's not really forcing people. I mean, if you want to accept that type of bullshit, then that's completely up to you. I mean, if you want to support your, subordinate yourself to someone like him, that's your choice. So he's not forcing anyone to do anything. But he's definitely trying to create an aura of fear where an aura of fear and like in love at the same time it's really hard to explain you'd have to watch some of the videos to see that where he, he talks about having love and having humility and kindness and he uses this sort of syrupy voice to do that and then at the flick of a switch he turns it into a WWE pro wrestling promo where he starts screaming at the camera and cussing and saying he's the baddest man on the planet and do you know who you're messing with and Blah, blah, blah. And then he starts uh, putting videos about bounty hunters. He wants to hire bounty hunters. He puts uh, monetary rewards out on certain people. Much like Mark Sean Christopher was deputizing people or sending out sheriff's badges, Russell's doing the same thing. Saying, if you don't fall in line with what he's saying, he's going to arrest you and put you in jail. And I can say with first-hand knowledge that I have had followers of Russell J. Gould email me and threaten me with putting me in jail or military tribunals and physical violence and using very, very nasty language. And they are followers of his. Yes. Very passionate followers, you could say. That is an authoritarian construct. And before anybody formulates any kind of uh, bias or whatever, Trust me when I say 
that there has actually never been any threat, any real threat from this contingent. There's never been really any danger at all other than adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, fiction, babble, email threats sent by these people to me. I have no, I have zero fear of these people because they're just like the fiction. They're spun up in a negative condition of state and they're perpetrating the same authoritarian uh, bullshit on people to try and get them to buy into a fiction scenario where one man is in command and one man is your savior and we need to support him and we need to bring him forward and we need to all work together to get him. Let me tell you, for me, as an individual, even if I didn't know anything about this grammar and I was watching his videos, that's the last guy I would want to be in that position just because of his erratic and chaotic uh, mental condition of state, quite obviously. Watch those videos from 2018 on, and you'll see what I mean. But that's just an opinion, and this podcast is a podcast of opinion. Just want to remind you of that. And as I just reminded you that this is a podcast of opinion for the Quantum Grammar Shoot, the only podcast of its kind that I know of on the internet, um, I want to thank you for joining me. This podcast, is the main topic has been negative conditions of state, particles of negation. All of these things, in my mind, are considered particles of negation, whether it has to do with the grammar, quite literally, as particles within the grammar, that are particles of negation, or whether it's negative conditions of state, people out there uh, telling you what you cannot do, or what's going to happen to you if you don't follow orders, if you don't follow the rules, you're not correct, blah, blah, blah. All negative conditions of state, to me, from flag pro- protocols, these are red flags. When I see things like that, that tells me that those people are in the fiction system, no matter what they're talking about. If they're trying to force, if you see individuals trying to force certain things on other people or trying to force people to do something, that is a dead giveaway that they are part of the fiction system. Whether knowingly or unknowingly, they're part of it. Because that is what the fiction system does. It tries to force people to do things that they don't want to do and force them to do it out of fear. Real quick example. A beginner, a noob, who's just stumbled onto quantum grammar. It sounds like the greatest thing in the world and they want to learn it. And then they come across a Russell video where... He tells you that, well, yeah, this grammar is here for you, but first I have to authorize it. You have to come through me in order to use it. Because if you don't, then you're in violation of blah, 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 blah. And this, that, and the third's going to happen. And so basically threatening you that if you don't get a live life claim through him, which, by the way, he charges money for. Well, not him specifically, but the group of people that he authorizes to sell his live life claims, they charge money for it. That's how he doesn't take accountability for those things. He passes it on to someone else. But in any case, in order to get one of, quote unquote, his live life claims, you have to pay a fee, right? And if you don't do that, then you're not correct. And then this, that, and the third is going to happen. You're going to get into, you're going to run into trouble. You're going to go to jail. You're going to whatever, shipwreck, whatever words he uses. So that is an example of him using fear to force people, not force, coerce people into getting live life claims from him, which are basically you giving over the authority of your live life to him because his name is in the copyright copy claim section of that live life claim. I'm not saying anything that's not known. Look at the live life claim. 
and there are numerous other things and problems outside of the grammar. The grammar is not correct by the very rules of the grammar that he claims to have some authority over. But as he has himself shared in many places in seminars and videos in the past, knowledge creates authority. Authority comes from knowledge. You have to know what you're doing in order to have authority over any sort of contract or manner or to have a position of authority. And you have to also have the skill to convey that to another contract party. Authority doesn't come from someone else. Unless, of course, you submit to that authority, then you will be giving up your authority and giving it to somebody else. You would be subordinate to them. So let's put it this way. Let's say that I want to take a drink of water. And someone says, you can't take that drink of water unless you have my authority to do it because that's my cup and that's my water. You can't, you can't do it. And you don't see any proof that that is their cup or that is their water. But the way they say it, it kind of makes you think, wow, you know, they're pretty forceful about it. So I better ask for their permission to drink that water. So then they authorize you to drink that water and then you drink it. And you get sick from it because the water is, is bad or whatever. You, they authorize you to drink the water, even though you didn't know anything about the water. And you drank it and you got sick from it. Now, if you had knowledge of the cup of the water and you looked at it and maybe it had little, you know, bugs in it or whatever. And that's what made you sick. You have knowledge that you know that bugs will make you sick if you drink them. You know, whatever kind of bugs they are, ticks, whatever you want to say. You had knowledge of it, so therefore you wouldn't drink it. But because they authorized you to do it, and you didn't know what the hell you were doing, you drank it. And now you're in trouble. Now you're sick. Probably not the clearest analogy. I wish I had a different one to share. Well, yeah, I might as well go for it all the way. But let's take the live life claim, for example. There are two, two roads right here I'm going to suggest. Uh, or I'm going to offer, not suggest, I'm going to offer. Okay, the first road would be the beginner with whom this, this podcast is directed towards. The beginner who doesn't know anything about the grammar wants to get a live life claim. So they go and pay 150, 200 bucks, whatever it is to Russell's little uh, followers. They pay the money. They get the live life claim. Now what are they going to do? They don't know the grammar. They don't know how to use it. But yet they're told that they're not authorized to use it because they have this live life claim with with Russell's name in the copyright and so on and so forth. Or an individual can go out and learn the grammar for themselves from a few different sources, cross-reference, formulate their own thoughts on what is correct and what is not correct without buying into appealing to authority, that logical fallacy, they just go out and they cross-reference. Maybe they learn from David's videos. Maybe they learn from Russell's videos. Maybe they learn from uh, Mark Cachon. Well, actually, you wouldn't really learn grammar from Mark Cachon Christopher's video, so I'll leave that out. Um, or you, they go look at my videos, over 300 videos on my YouTube channel, and they cross-reference, and they get a good uh, sense of the, the grammar, and then they create the, their own live life claim for themselves because they understand the mechanics of how to do it. And so now they have a live life claim that they are the copyright copy claim holder of. They are the author and authority of. It's theirs. And they have a rudimentary understanding of the grammar and they can use it. Which position would you rather be in? Would you rather be in a position where you paid for a live life claim and you've given up authority to someone else and you don't know shit about the grammar? Or would you rather learn the grammar for yourself, formulate your own thoughts on the matter create your own life life claim and be your own authority which one logically sounds safer to you in the long run when you're put in those positions those stressful situations when you have to fend for yourself when you don't have uh, a david or a russell there right beside you coaching you through it or defending you because they're not going to be there the only person that's going to the only individual the only man or woman that's going to be there is you 
and you better have closure on what it is you're doing because as I said authority comes from knowledge and the skill to convey that knowledge to another contract party if you don't have that well good luck to you so that's the podcast hope you enjoyed it I haven't done one like this in a while kind of uh just went straight for the for the juggler on this one if you'd like to learn this grammar and related mechanics uh, after you get uh, a certain rudimentary closure on the grammar you can contact me at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com I've been teaching this for about five years now to people all over the earth I provide one hour workshops to those who qualify and you can email me at that email address and we can uh, we can talk about it and see if that's what you want to do uh, outside of that, you can check out my YouTube channel, uh, Jason Matthew Glass. You just look me up, you'll find it. And there are over 300 videos regarding correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar on there. Everything you need to learn the grammar, all the mechanics are there. I invested thousands of hours in creating those videos, and it's contingent upon you to invest whatever. Uh, value or time, sweat, equity, energy, and studying them on your own, if that's what you choose. Thanks, and I'll catch you next time. Thank you for watching this video. I hope it provided some clarity on the subjects mentioned. You can email me at the email address that's uh, been screened at the bottom of your picture for the whole video, jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com. If you have any grammar questions, or if you wish to participate in a 10 to 15 minute video consult, or if you wish to apply for a correct grammar workshop, you can email me there. Uh, please like and subscribe to this channel and also my Coral Blade Grotto channel if you'd like. And always remember that authority comes from knowledge and the skill in conveying that knowledge and closure. Thanks.